Hello there, welcome back, and welcome to part 85 in my build log series of the Drumset 1200 scale model of the Titanic. Today I am doing a couple of jobs on the boat deck. Firstly, I have fitted all of the railings, which separated off the various different sections of the boat deck. So they are all fitted, warning notices and everything, all done. Uh, I have also fitted the funnel stays. So these are the guy ropes that held the funnels in position, uh, and they were right fiddly processed, to be quite honest with you, but they're in. Uh, and yeah, they look cracking. So, a few things to do in this episode. Without any further ado, let's crack on. Right, I'm just doing some of the barriers that separate off the uh, sections of the boat deck, and I've already done one. Uh, so that's the port side that separates off the officers' quarters from first class promenade space. Uh, and I'm now on to the second, this piece here, and I'm just going to show you, this is part 32. Uh, and I didn't do this on the first bit, but I'm going to do it from now on, because these parts are incredibly, incredibly fiddly. Um, and the reason for that is they're not very sound. With most of the um, the railings, they're sort of structural along the whole length. On this, however, you can see that you've got two sections of railing here, and then you've got a gate and then you've got another section of railing. The problem is this gate is connected to this, but not this. So it means that this entire thing is kept in line by one very, very, very thin piece of brass, probably, I don't know, 0.2 of a mil, something like that. So what ends up happening is even when you're cutting this stuff out, this entire assembly goes out of alignment and of course it needs to be straight because it's a railing uh, so it's a bit tricky so what I'm going to do from now on is I'm going to put some glue on this gate to connect it onto this section and hopefully that'll do something just to sort of keep this in line a bit more because it's been a problem up to now. Right so we've got our railing and we've got the two caps for said railing and now I'm just going to connect them all together. So now that I've sort of got a bit of glue holding that in and it holds itself under its own weight, I'm just going to go back and add a bit more. Just to make sure that they are never going to come apart again. Same principle on the other side. Right, there we go. One last thing to add here. Right, the last little bit is to add the warning sign telling passengers not to go into the next section because it's officers only. And the only real consideration here is to make sure that it's level because, of course, this is so small you can't really read to the sign even though there is lettering on it. You really can't read the thing, so that isn't that important, but making sure that it's level is because, of course, these signs wouldn't have been skew with. <clears throat> there we go. <coughs> so, there we go. Now, getting these onto the model is always a bit more tricky than you might think. Uh, Let's 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of spots of glue right on the bottom. And hopefully they will hold it and allow me to sort of, you know, build up the glue as we go. Now that it's nominally in place, I can be a bit more cavalier in how I start going about things because it's sort of held. So. Let's go and add some more. Right, we'll just let that dry, that should be us. Right, here we go. This separates off engineer's space from the first class promenade space. Uh, and I just wanted to draw your attention to this one. I didn't film it, um, but I've deliberately left the gate open in this one just to add a little bit more sort of, a bit of interest. I'll probably put an engineer walking through that gate, um, but it just adds a bit more variety. It's like having a door open on the ship, you know, it just just makes it look like people are actually using these things as opposed to them just sort of being plonked there for no reason. So there we go. We need to do the one on the other side and then we need to do the other two fences further down that separated off the engineer's promenade space from the second class promenade space. So three more to go, three done, halfway through. Let's carry on. Crary on, by the way, is a mixture of me trying to say crack on and carry on simultaneously and mixing the two together unsuccessfully. So here we go, assembling the next railing along uh, and I'm just adding the wooden balustrades on the top of that now as well. Um, <clears throat> one thing to note here is that I actually ran out of the metal signs. Uh, so I've had to use transfers and then stick those onto the railings uh, as shown in this clip here. But they worked out pretty well in the end. Okay, here we go, last one. And I can't pick it up with my fingers because it's too small, so I'll use some tweezers instead. Right, so what we're going for here is across the deck like that. And as you can see, this is very clearly, it's a barrier, but it's really, a, it's a sort of visual warning more than anything, because if people really wanted to, they could have gone past the lifeboat. But of course, 
you don't want your barrier to get in the way of loading lifeboats. So it was really a visual thing. Anyway, as I've done throughout this process, I'm going to start just by getting one end of it in position. And all I did there is I just glued the very end of the railing, nothing fancy or special, but enough just to hold it in place. And that now has pinned the railing in place and it allows me just to work my way along and spot some glue down. to hold the thing in place more permanently. Okay. Just carry on with this, couple more spots probably. one and the last one and as you can see on a few occasions these these they have a habit of wanting to lift off the deck usually because they're not entirely straight so it's worth sometimes using a pair of tweezers just to hold them in place while you're doing it and there you go that's all our railings in place so, on to the next little job. Now, today's an exciting day. Um, Neil from over at Woody's Model Works sent me a huge amount of photo etch, which I reviewed in a previous video. Um, but the sad thing was, I was never able to use very much of it because um, a lot of this stuff was either interior stuff, which I'd already fitted, or it was external things. And I was just a bit worried about the amount of additional weight uh, that metal would add, uh, just with a view to my model being a an actual floating radio control model, you know. But today is a happy day because I am actually able to use some of the stuff he sent, and I'm doing the funnel rigging. So, as you can see, I've already picked out various bits of that rigging in a sort of hemp colour, uh, and I'll go into a bit more depth on why later. Uh, but the first thing I need to do is to cut out these anchor points, which are going to stick onto the funnel, and then we'll cut out each individual rigging section and get that stuck down. So plenty to do today. There we go, the two are in. Um, second one better than the first, as you might expect. Um, I'm doing note that I'm doing the starboard side, which is the, the side of the ship, which, uh, which will face away from me when the model's on the wall. Uh, and this is a technique I do sometimes do when I'm working on something that I'm not wholly confident to my own abilities for, you know, just so I have a bit of a learning curve before I go onto the side that's going to be more visible to me. Um, and these certainly are frustrating. I mean, they do look wonderful once they're in. Uh, you know, they really do look nice. They they give the, the model a fineness that we haven't yet had. Um, but crikey, they're fiddly. You just, you've got a lot of spinning plates, you know, you've got to get the rigging exactly where it was anchored on the funnel can see that the funnel has these sort of like little nubs which is where the rigging came from uh, so you've got to get that right but then of course you also have to get the thing taut and glued onto the right place on the deck so there's a lot of a lot of spinning plates all at once that you've got to get right and of course all the angles have to be right and oh god it, it, it becomes a uh, pretty challenging but anyway uh, we're there um, I've done two I got annoyed I went out for an angry run and <laughs> now I'm back and we will carry on with the third. Right, here we go. And as you can see, here's one of the funnel stays that I've cut out. This is one of the longer ones for the fourth funnel. And the first thing you can note is that there's a sort of duplicated section right at the end. So the first thing we need to do is to bend that over onto itself to double the thickness. So I tend to just pinch with between a set of, set of pliers and then bend with finger and thumb. And there you go, nice and easy. Very straightforward. Now, the other thing 
that we need to do is there is a sort of base plate at the bottom. This is the section of the um, funnel stay that marries up to the deck itself. Uh, and there's a sort of base plate that connects up to here. Uh, and at the top, there is a hook which connects up onto the funnel. So that you can see that the end of this is hooked. Uh, <clears throat> and then there is a sort of cleat, these parts here, that marry up onto the funnels themselves. Now, what I've been doing, and this seems to have worked quite well, is when I glue, I've put a very small amount of glue on my funnel stay. And I've hooked it around the cleat and allowed it to dry. And that way you can put a little bit of, um, you can put it under a little bit of load and you then know that the whole assembly is, looks like it's taut. Um, you're not going to end up with a funnel stay that's slightly sort of off at an angle or something like that. So that's what I tend to do to connect up to the top section. And I'll show you what I do with the bottom section now. So there we have the bottom plate. Here's the funnel stay. And it's as easy as that. There it is, connected up. So now this is ready to go onto the model. Now, as with practically everything I've done on this model, we're using blue tack. Sorry, I'm moving the camera. We're using blue tack to make our lives easier. So the aim of this is that I'm going to, I'll zoom out a bit. I'm going to use some blue tack to connect the funnel stay up onto the funnel. Then we can stick it with glue down onto the deck. And then we can finalize the connection onto the funnel at the end. That's the plan anyway, we'll see how we go.
we go. So that's in place. And I'm pretty happy looking at the instructions. You can see that this particular stay needs to be going just to the end of the fourth, uh, the first lifeboat in that chain, which indeed it is. So pretty happy with that. So now, sorry for the truly shocking camera work, but there you go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some glue and relying on the blue tack connection at the top, I'm going to lift this up, put a bit of glue on the underside, lower it back down again, and we'll let that dry. And once the bottom connection's dried, we'll go up to the top, take the blue tack off, and secure at the top as well. That's how we do it. The blue tack just takes that sort of the stress of having to glue two points simultaneously away from us. Okay, so we've given this plenty of time to dry now, so we shall remove the blue tack. Then all we need to do is get a very wee sponge, sponge of glue. Leave that to dry. Now here we are on the other side of the model. We just got the first couple of guys in and of course now we have a slightly different problem once again. We've got another plate spinning so to speak because apart from getting the position on the funnel correct and the position on the deck right, we also have to make sure, as far as reasonably practical, that the guide ropes line up correctly on either side of the model. We want these to be pretty symmetrical and that is a bit tricky. Now of course the first one's nice and easy because they just they go right in the corners on the aft portion of the bridge and these next two quite easy because they're pretty close together so you can get a good view for it. Uh, but ones further back really need to start looking at landmarks so to speak. So for example this one, the next one we're going to do, it's about five millimetres towards the end of the collapsible lifeboat. So we want this that on the other side, this one to be around about there. But um, it's just another little thing that we need to be aware of, um, because what I don't want to do is to look from the side profile and see that all these guide ropes don't line up at all, because that would be somewhat disappointing, I would say. So we need to be a bit more vigilant now and carry on. Now, one of the problems I often have when I'm modelling, particularly on really fiddly things, and particularly when you're sort of lining up stuff um, on black backgrounds, like the tips of these funnels, um, I often have a problem with getting enough light onto the setting um, so that I can really see what's going on. Um, <clears throat> and this is particularly true in the UK in the winter, where you don't get a huge amount of natural light coming in through the windies. Um, I'm fortunate that um, I managed to get a few freebies from work and I got this sort of torchy thing, which I've uh, thoroughly engineered a method of connecting it to the desk. But what it does is it sheds a huge amount of fairly harsh, but nonetheless very good light onto the surface that I'm modelling, which is very useful. So uh, apologies if you find the harshness of the light a bit sort of jarring in these coming clips, uh, but it's very helpful for me just being able to see what I'm actually doing.
Now that's the funnel stays in place now, and it was really quite challenging, but I'm very happy with the result that we've ended up with. Um, I also just want to say thank you very much to Neil over at Woody's Model Works for sending me this kit in the first place, because it really was a pleasure to work with it. It was really, really well-made stuff. So thank you very much, Neil, for sending that and all the other photo etch that you sent me. It's much appreciated. Now, in other news, I'd recognise that I've been a little bit of a silly sausage because what I've done is, ages ago, I glazed my aft dome cover. Uh, and here is the glazing that I've now removed because what I did was I glazed it and then I went over that section of the deck with a matte varnish. And of course, what that did was it made the glazing all cloudy and horrible. And that had the effect of you not being able to see the beautiful dome cover beneath, which was a real shame. And if you look at the forward one, you can see that that problem doesn't exist because, of course, I haven't gone over that area with a matte varnish, so that glazing is still nice and glazy. Uh, so all I've done is I've taken off the aft dome cover and I'm going to replace the glazing and then stick it back down again um, because, as I say, just being a little bit silly, but you can see the difference between the uh, the bits that have been hit by that varnish and the bits that haven't. Uh, and for the amount of time and effort I put into getting that dome looking nice, it seems like a shame to not then see it once the model's complete. So we're going to change that deck glazing now. Right, here we go. As you can see, funnel stays all in place all the way along the ship and don't they look nice I'll just add that little bit more detail make the ship look that wee bit more sort of engineered and of course they also make it a far more delicate model than it was before just to draw your attention to a few wee little things I've picked out some detail on these uh, guys, on the funnel stays. Uh, so I've just put a sort of, a sort of tan color where there would have been rope instead of an actual metal connection. And you can see that's in two places right at the very bottom where the funnel stays connect into the deck. Um, and of course the cleats at the top, all looking very nice. So now I will, Take some more shots of this with the ship's lighting in place, just so you get an idea of what it'll look like with the lighting. Uh, and then we shall conclude the episode. Okay, here we go. And as you can see, the light just sort of brings out the funnel stays that wee bit more. Because they're black, they sort of stand out against the light coming from the various parts of the ship. Just to draw your attention to a few things, as you can see, there's the forward dome cover. You can see that the glass is clear there. And as such, you can see the dome beneath it. Also, incidentally, you can just see the skylight into the Marconi room. And right there, you can see either Phillips or Bride sitting, working at the set. Then moving back. You can see the funnel stays popping out on the deck. And here we are on the aft dome cover. And now you can see, as I've replaced that glass, once again, we can see the dome in all its glory, which is exactly what I was after and exactly what we couldn't see before because it had become frosted, which was a bit unfortunate. So there we go. It's looking really good now. Um, we really are getting close to the end. Uh, some shots at the back, of course, with all our new people on board. And I do like uh, one of the things that I'd really sort of not recognised before. I love the shadows you get of the people standing on the deck always looks really quite sort of eerie almost in a way. Uh, there we go, looking forward.
it's looking really good now. So that is the end of this episode. It'll probably be a while until I do another episode because I'm going on holiday. Um, but next will probably be stuff on the boat deck. So a mixture of adding people probably and then also adding other paraphernalia such like deck chairs and things like that. Um, so that'll be next time, as I say. Don't really know when that'll be, but it'll be at some point. So I'll leave you now with some photos of the funnel stays, uh, and I hope you've enjoyed this. If you've got any questions or comments, pop them down below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you have enjoyed this, do please like and or subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.